me with Anthony Yard. Um, big fight coming up for you, isn't it? Intercontinental title. Well, they get bigger and bigger. This is what happens. Talk about how your mindset changes with each fight that comes your way. Well, my mind frame is just, I think it's been the same from when I turned professional. Um, obviously, occasions change. Um, but I'm literally just focused on, um, on the goal. I, I, I need to become a world champion and um, I'm going to become a world champion. So any stage that I need to go, go through to get there, that's what I'm obligated to do. This is 12 or 13 fight. 13 fight, right. So how have things changed in terms of your body and how you feel and this press conferences from the first fight? I mean, how are you dealing with it all? And is it something that you're just taking your stride or is it just like make you hungry for bigger and better? You want Vegas, do you want, do you know what I mean? How, how, was, how was that process impacting on Anthony Yard? Well, it is something I'm just taking in my stride. And um, I do want bigger and better. Of course, um, I'm looking to elevate in the sport to, um, to heights that people have thought impossible, literally. Um, things are going well right now. I need to keep it that way. So again, at the same time as I'm I'm taking it in my stride. I need to keep level-headed, keep my feet on the ground, stay focused, and um, don't let things get to my head. And that's How difficult is that? Because you've got a lot of people boosting and gassing you now. It's, it's, as the hype train kind of builds speed and people kind of cotton onto you, they're like, right, this, that, that must kind of boost you and it must be harder to keep your feet on the ground. What do you do to keep your feet on the ground? I literally just be myself. And um, I think experience, life experiences, keep you humble sometimes. Um, I know there's a time to entertain and there's a time that you need to, you know, literally just be entertaining, that's it. But, um, but when I'm saying I need to keep my feet on the ground, meaning training is number one, winning my fights is number one. Anything outside of that is, um, it ain't, ain't of any big importance um, at this stage or literally any stage. And someone that I really look, I look to and look at them as a, um, as a role model in terms of their discipline, is Fred Mayweather. You know, even look at the hats he got to, and look how he stayed training, and how people rated him for his work ethic and things like that. You need to keep that in your mind. To get to a certain level, you need to keep that. And to, for him to do that for 20 years, that's again, something that's outstanding and unheard of. It's, um, it's all about pushing yourself to limit for 20 years, doing, I'm not gonna even name certain things, but certain particular things, but in boxing, it's, it's amazing, you know, putting a lot of strain on your body mentally each time you go out there and perform, it's, it's, <laughs> it takes a lot out of you. If you win this title, and I say if, because I know a boxer's mentality is when, um, next year looks rosy for you in terms of the prospects that you could be undertaking. How quickly do you want to move? Frank was a little bit, you know, coy about you fighting for world titles next year. I, I reckon he's probably trying to hold you back to 2019. <laughs> Um, but if it all went your way, that could happen next year, surely? Well, everything's timing. That's a saying I'm going to stay by because if you... When I, turned, when I started boxing, um, just before I was 20, I had my first amateur fight just before I was 20 years old. I had my first professional fight at the age of 23, just before I was 24. Um, just turned 26 now. So how quick everything's happened, it's only down to timing. And, you know, sometimes when you put a time limit on things where you say it's going to be that period or that time or that period you're speaking it into existence and sometimes it ain't the right time so for me everything is time it's about believing doing my, my job is to work hard um, believe in the end result and um, just keep keep doing what I'm doing. Talking about working hard my cameraman was at the open workout yesterday <laughs> and I was in the office and I saw him tweet that that was the best pad work he's seen since Floyd Mayweather came here when, when was it cameraman? 09, 010, 010. I think it was I think it was before that it might have been oh wait yeah, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, oh nine. Um, that pe the Peacock Gym that day was mental. I don't know if you ever saw the videos. And it was jamming the way that people were hanging off the rafters. The work you do with Tunde, the way that you guys are maturing as a partnership. Talk a little bit about that. And what was it, five rounds they did yesterday? Five rounds on the pads without, without a break? Uh, you know what? Again, people talk about the rounds and stuff like that. I don't even pay attention to that. Um, with me and my team, it's about work and having fun. Um, me and Tunde have a, you know, a, a unique relationship. We have a lot of fun, you know, but at the same time, we know about hard work, and um, we we both push each other. If I if I'm ever slacking, which I'm never, which I never am, <laughs> if he's ever slacking, which he's which he never is, 
um, we tell each other, we give each other a little bump and say, let's work, or we're competitive as well. So to be competitive and you both got the same kind of goals, it only can strive you to bigger and better things. I asked Tunde about the division. You know, some of the guys that he believes are a challenge or something to aim for, shoot for, emulate. What's your opinion on that? Um, my opinion on that is literally just focusing on myself. Um, I don't focus on any other individual. Um, literally, even if, I, even if I'm never going to fight them, even if I'm talking about Fred Mayweather, he's retired and he's a weight that I'm never going to fight. In terms of me comparing myself to them, I'm never going to do that. Um, I can only look at what certain people have accomplished and say, I pay homage to that. So again, um, right now the person that's on the pinnacle of my weight division is Andre Wood. Again, I pay homage and I say, you know, I, I completely respect what he's done. He's done certain things I will never be able to do. Go Olympics, um, things like that. So again, you have to pay homage to people like that. Um, and it's about being humble in, and paying respects to people. Even someone like, again, Floyd Mayweather, he paid homage to Chavez and people were talking about him being 50 and all. He said, listen, well, Chavez was 70 and all before he lost. Um, he did take a loss, but he pays homage to the guys that paid the way for him. And that's, again, what I need to do. Um, I will always be respectful, unless it's, obviously there's a time where you need to perform and be entertaining. But at this stage, it's about being humble, being respectful and doing what I need to do in the ring. If the next 12 months went as you wanted them to go, what would you achieve? I would achieve outstanding things again. Um, what I've accomplished so far, people actually literally with their mouth told me it's impossible. They say, oh, you, like, it's impossible, you can't do that. It's going to take this amount of time and that amount of time. That's why one of my sayings is everything's timing. Um, anything can happen. I can be a world champion within my next three fights. I can be a world champion within my next six fights. I can be my a world champion within my, ne my next two fights. You just never know. That's why something to do, something that's beautiful to do is to follow someone's journey. I literally started from under the gun, in the, in, in the dirt, under the, um, under the pavement. So to be where I'm at right now, it's actually amazing.